Hello, my name is Jim. I'm pastor, associate pastor of New Hope Christian Fellowship, and I, I uh, minister to the men of our church on Saturday mornings at 7 o'clock. And I encourage you to come have breakfast. Men cook good stuff, good food. Um, one of the subjects that we talk about are being men and being men in God's kingdom here on earth. And uh, I like to really relate to David. Uh, David is a man after God's own heart, and I'm kind of a man after David's heart because the situations he's been in and, uh, you know, his past and, and, and then the way he turns to God when he's in trouble. Uh, one of the topics that we discussed recently was uh, being mighty warriors, being mighty men of valor. And I'd like to read some scripture where David's as king of Israel, and he had the mighty men of valor, and one in particular named Benaiah. In chapter 11 of First Chronicles, beginning with verse 22, we read, Benaiah was the son of Jehoiada, the son of the valiant man of Kabazil, who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a man of great height, five cubits tall. And the Egyptian's hand was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did, and won a name among three mighty men. Indeed, he was more honored than the thirty, but he did not attain to the first three, and David appointed him over his guard. So Benaiah was over the thirty, a mighty man of valor. And I'd like to relate us with that. You know, the, the list of David's mighty warriors in First Chronicles includes this Benaiah and others. Can you imagine, though, <laughs> his best man, all of his strength, he killed a, a lion in a slippery pit. But the most amazing thing that I, I read in here is, is the Egyptian that was like seven and a half feet tall, tall enough to be the center <laughs> for, the, for, uh, for the Chicago Bulls. And the, and, and the spear that he had was huge. I mean, it was like a lead pipe. And Benaiah only had a wooden club. <laughs> and he took the spear away from this guy and killed him with it. Even so, as we look at this, we don't need a spear nowadays to to uh, move forward in in the line of uh, like uh, uh, like these guys did and have great honor and great honor with the power that they had and the physical strength that they had to kill lions and to kill giants. Uh, to uh, you know, they didn't need a PhD or a degree that brought them this honor. Who today is doing exploits for God? Where is the enemy being driven back? How is the enemy being driven back? That's the great yearning for the spirituality-minded people. We're not enchanted or polished with great sermons and organizational techniques. Where are the mighty men and women anointed by God to truly make a difference? What is it really that stops us from becoming mighty warriors in the Lord? God has not changed. He's still superior to anything the enemy can throw against us. There's no personal church situation too hopeless for all the sufficient power of the Holy Spirit. God will by, by no means, God will be no more eager to act tomorrow than he is right now. He's waiting for us to take up, step up. He's waiting us for stick, taking the promises that he's giving us to be more than conquerors, to be mighty men of valor for our family for our community, for our church, and the larger part of it for our nation. 
we as men need to rise up, men of God, and rely on the Word of God. We, we at New Hope believe that this is the infallible Word of God right here. And God speaks to us through His Word. As it says in John, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And in one fourteen it says, And then the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. What can we do today? How can we be mighty men of valor by stepping up? Except by taking on the Holy Spirit, taking Him within ourselves, by receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And when we do that, He empowers us with the Holy Spirit. And when we're empowered with the Holy Spirit, we can speak boldly. But in order to speak boldly, we must know what Jesus' words are. We must know what God's words are. And they're right here in this book. And this is what we're all about. So to be mighty men of valor, we must know who God is and receive him as that. And we can't do it all on our own, on our own power. You know, in Proverbs, he says, you know, to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, and he will direct your paths. And that's plural, paths, your path at home with your family, your path at work and your coworkers, your path even when you're out fishing or riding motorcycles. That's one of the things I love to do is ride motorcycles, you know, fishing or, or whatever your fancy is, whatever your mission is. Whatever your ministry is. And the one verse that I want to close this on is in Philippians 4.13 because Paul knows what it's like. I know that we know what it's like to be down. We know what it's like to have plenty. We know what it's like to have, you know, food in our bellies. And we know what it's like to be hungry. But I know this, that it all sums up that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that you have called us up to be conquerors, conquering leaders, conquering men in your kingdom. We thank you for the opportunity to rise up and speak boldly in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.